All right, good morning, IHSA football family. It is December 8th, Wednesday. How you guys doing on this lovely cold day? My name is Peter Lionbury, aka Coach Big Pete of Deep Dish Football. Make sure you follow Coach Big Pete and Deep Dish Football on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. My email is coachbigpetefp at gmail.com. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So, uh, just again, a quick reminder um, my name is Peter Lionbury of Deep Dish Football Publisher. Um, if you like my work, feel free to leave a tip slash donation via PayPal link below in the video or in the article as well. This is on the article as well. Visit deepdishfootball.com. Advertisers, still looking for advertisers for next year. Um, and if you're interested, email me at coachbigpete, fphemail.com. Have your brand or business featured on Deep Dish Football. Um, and again, next month, uh, January 9th, starts the Deep Dish Football fundraiser to uh, keep Deep Dish Football going. Um, and uh, just check it out. Um, it's going to be on starting on the 9th. It's going to go to February 9th or 8th. Um, also, recruits fill out the recruiting questionnaire as well. It's on deepdishfootball.com, brand new. And, whoops, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, and also, do still doing free recruiting advisement sessions with parents and players. It's absolutely free. Uh, uh, file, uh, schedule a deep dish fo uh, free recruiting advisement session with me. It's absolutely free. Again, parents and recruits, my email is coachbigpetefp at gmail.com. have done a lot so far, and it's been fun. It's been fun, and it's great to get to know some parents and some kids and just to help. And again, like I said, recruiting is 100% free. Do not pay for a recruiting service. Don't pay for it. It's an absolute scam. And I, I get angry when I get emails from parents saying that we got scammed, blah, blah, blah. You are right. I'm sick and tired of it, and I hate, and I'm not that... <laughs> I'm not that uh, big of a, um, I don't have an ego, but when a high school coach tells you that recruiting is free, when a college coach tells you that recruiting is free, and when I tell you recruiting is free, recruiting is free. <laughs> Come on, listen, people, please. Don't waste your money. All right, so let's get into uh, December 8th of uh, 2021, episode three of the recruiting report for Deep Dish Football. I'll do this every day till December 15th. I might take a break this weekend, but we'll see. Uh, Marist A.K. Igi, wide receiver, an absolute great kid. Honestly, good kid. I uh, saw him at uh, Next Level Workout last winter. He gets an offer from Army, well-deserved offer, um, small speedster, um, can do anything and everything, especially with that Army offense. It's a great offer for Army. A K. Igi, keep an eye out for the kid. Next, and uh, this is not much of a, this is not much of a big, I would say a big surprise um, I thought this kid was going to get an offer a little bit earlier in the summer, but Glenn Bard, uh, Glenn Bard self, uh, defensive end, and I forgot the point. <laughs> it's killing me right now. Um, Glenn Bard self, defensive end, uh, class 2023 uh, gets an offer from uh, Central Michigan. I forgot to put his F and last name, and it's killing me. And I did it, and I am an absolute idiot for doing it. I do apologize. Um, but he's a hell of a player, uh, great athleticism, great frame, 6'4". Um, very impressive, especially with college coaches talking about him in the summer. Definitely good to keep an eye out for Eddie Turek um, from Lions Township. Another defensive end gets an offer from Iowa State. Uh, a little bit surprised by this because I thought he was going to get I thought he was good. I thought he was going to get the first all, his first Division I offer was going to be from Iowa State. That was my personal feeling. Because usually Iowa State is always the first one to get the first offer in. i uh, completely shocked Iowa State got this late to uh, Eddie Turk. Uh, Santis, Tams, Santis <laughs> Descalis of uh, Prospect gets an offer from Valparaiso. Again, big man, definitely kid you keep an eye for him. Malik Leasley, who's got numerous offers, wide receiver for, from Simeon, gets an offer from Syracuse. And Dino Babers hits up the Illinois pipeline. Again, not that much of a surprise. Um, he's gonna get. He's gonna continuously get more and more offers. He was very impressive. I loved how I saw the whole game between him and Phillips. It was a great game. Um, just impressive, Malik Easley. Um, all right, so let's get to uh, as I do every uh, show, the underclassman spotlight. And again, if you want your uh, spotlight, just let me know. Email me, tweet at me. Hey, Peak, I want to be part of the spotlight. Blah blah blah. Um, and I just picked these kids off of Twitter. And uh, one of the players that I really like is out of uh, LaSalle, Peru, Nicolas uh, 
Belsky. Offensive lineman class of 2023, 6'3", 250. Uh, one of my favorite linemen, I got to say, uh, for this 2023 uh, class, great mobility, tough, again, another tough nose kid. Um, Marcel Peru had had a great season last season, um, and he was one of the key players. But Nicholas Bleski is definitely kidding one to keep an eye out for a good frame. Um, just tremendous potential, tremendous upside for this young man. Um, I, forgot who, I forgot the game that he played. There was one game where he was just absolutely mauling defensive linemen. Uh, but Nicholas Bleskley, unbelievable. And he got a good, again, good tenacity, finishes his blocks. Definitely kid you want to keep an eye out for. Next, Edward Kentra of, of, uh, sorry, of Hinsdale Central, class of 2024. Um, gave a little bit of a quick look. Again, Hinsdale Central, again, I'm I'm out of Westmont. I keep a close eye on those Hinsdale kids. And Edward Kentra is one of those kids, defensive end. Um, very impressive athleticism, especially for that young of an age. Um, and I gotta say, great acceleration, good two first, good two first step burst. Um, gets into his contain. Also, a uh, good little bit on the handwork. Uh, still needs a little cause some improvements, but again, that's all young defensive linemen need improvements. And I talked about the defensive linemen that have gotten offers. Um, they still need improvement too, and. Um, this kid, Edward Kentra, is going to be another huge player to keep an eye out for the class of 2024. Um, love his speed, love his tenacity. Again, still has to work a little bit on his technique. I think that's going to be huge for him. Um, to me, um, still gets in front of plays, doesn't let the play go across him. Um, I think, again, the big thing is how he reacts with any uh, if there's any pulls. Um, also, to... The knows where the play is going, and again, great contain on the quarterback as well. Um, Shobi Adore, Oswego East, and this is one of the kids that I have been raving about for numerous years. He's class of 2023, if I'm not mistaken, out of Oswego East. The kid is a jack of all trades, can play anything and everything, and we live in a world of hybrid offenses, hybrid offenses and hybrid defenses, where a player will have to play one or two spots. Shobi Adore is all of them, and he can play anything. Edge rusher, uh, outside linebacker, H back, half uh, tailback. He plays a little great tailback, can play a little bit of a fullback, and well as a tight end as well. He can play everything and anything, and a great acceleration, um, great playmaker as well on offensive and defensive side of the ball. Has a tenacity to find the ball carrier as well on defense. Ashobi Adore, class of 2023 from Oswego East, is a name you must keep an eye out for. Um, he is going to be a huge. Huge utility player if a college team gets him because he can play any spot. And again, if there's injuries and that happens a lot in college football, he can play that spot. And he's that type of player. And he's just an absolute great high character kid. A show me a door of Oswego East class of 2023. And we get to the senior spotlight. Uh, Zion Williams of Normal Community uh, saw some of, of his game film when they were playing. Uh, uh, his game film, he got hit a little bit of a season cut short. Saw some of his game film when I was covering uh, scouting Jacobs versus uh, normal in the playoffs. Um, again, nice job, good athleticism, great leg work, one of the best leg works for the offensive lineman for the class of 2022. Um, still needs a little bit more work on his handwork. Um, very impressive, like I said, athleticism, and you would love those athletic offensive linemen, but Zion Williams from normal community class of 2022, 6'4". Um, just unbelievable. Just another kid to keep an eye out for, um, especially those college coaches that are looking for to uh, fix up their offensive line that have a couple few more offers left in them. Definitely a kid to keep an eye out for Zion Williams out of normal community. All right, and we get into the questions that I get. Um, and again, email me, tweet me questions, Reddit. Also, I get these questions from email and Reddit, and I will post them up and all that other stuff. And these are the two questions that I got for today. And uh, here we go. This one is from Sean Duffy of Rochester, Illinois. What is the most important thing in recruiting uh, for parents that they do not understand or need to understand? And the most important thing that I have always said, and I, and I preach this again and again and again, um, is the relationship with the head football coach of the high school. That is the most important thing. College coaches don't care about seven-on-seven -seven coaches. They don't care about trainers. They could give two shits about them. College coaches want to know what the head coach of that high school team has to say about that kit. That's the most important thing. 
If a kid skips practice for absolutely no good reason, and there are some reasons where you know this, where a head coach knows it's absolutely bullshit, he's going to say to a college coach, um, if he tells the, if he swears at the coach, he tells the kids, hey, you know, coach, go fuck yourself during a game, he's going to mention that too. Um, again, football is a game of discipline, and if you don't have a disciplined kid on that field, a lot of coaches don't want that, and that's going to be one of the things that a head coach talks to a college coach about. Think of this as a job interview and resources and, um, what's the word, uh, character character building. They want to talk to the high school coach about that. The high school coach is the what matters the most in recruiting. Believe that. And a lot of parents, well, the high school coach didn't talk good about my kid. Uh what did you, how's your kid? Oh, he's, he's good, he's good. Talk to the high school coach. Yeah, he missed a couple few practices. He got into some fights. Yeah, uh, he skipped classes as well. Oh, what, no shit. The college, co- the college coach is going to know about that. So come on, parents. You got to use your head about that. If your kid's, if your kid's an asshole, he ain't going to get recruited. Simple as that. All right, next one. And this is the last one. What is the biggest myth in recruiting at Holt of Carbondale, Illinois? The biggest myth in recruiting. In football recruiting, well, I can think of a lot. There's a lot of myths. Um, one is stars. <laughs> recruiting stars, they don't matter. Actually, if you want to look at uh, kids' um, offers, you look at the schools, they read like, um, this is going to kill me, hieroglyphics in old Egyptian times. If a kid gets offered from Army and Navy or Air Force, he's a, that means he's a disciplined player. And that's a lot of schools are interested in that. Um, if a kid gets an offer from certain schools in the Southeast, you don't want to touch that kid. It's, it, the offers are like hieroglyphics in the Egyptian times. and um, But stars don't matter. And a lot of people think, oh, I got to get those stars. I gotta get... The stars come after the offers. It's an absolute joke. I can make a, a rating system of pizza slices for deep dish football. And if a kid gets, has a certain amount of MAC offers, I can give him one or two stars. If a kid gets another Big Ten offer, I'll give him three stars. Um, and it's been documented that boosters have paid for stars from different college teams. And that's why you see a lot of college teams in the Southeast get favored by the um, by rivals. When you talk about 24-7, the recruiting website, they favor more of a Big Ten school as well. That's what people have to understand. Stars and rankings, they mean absolutely crap. Offers is what matters the most. And uh, it's its funny because I just got an offer and then I got I accidentally got three or four stars. That's because that, that recruiting writer didn't know ass crap about the player. And he found out that the school offered him and then they, they talked to the main management and they got him a star. If you need to search about stars, search Blake Carringer. He was a fake football recruit who got fakes, who uh, two two play, uh, two kids made up about. And he got, they said he got an offer from Alabama and Tennessee. Rivals gave him stars because rivals, they absolutely knows crap. So you got to understand that most of these writers don't have never played, never coached, never even scouted in their life. And that's one of the funniest things when I tell parents, oh, well, he co- what's up, coach? He never coached. He, he didn't coach anything. He didn't scout anything. Again, it's they just recycle old ESPN terms and edge crap and NFL Network terms that they heard on television or they read in a paper and they just keep recycling. Do you know how many times uh, these writers quote Mel Kuyper? Do you know effing how many times? It's sad. It's pretty pitiful, too. And college coaches laugh at these writers too, and they think that college co- uh, college writers get a oh they know these they know these coaches they talk to these coaches bullshit. Most of these writers don't, and some of the best writers that know these coaches don't write for rivals or twenty four seven. Okay, they're usually newspaper writers. To be honest with you, so that's one of the biggest myths that we talk about. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Send me an email, coachbigp at fpgmail.com um, or Reddit or Twitter or whatever. And have your questions read on the recruiting report, which will end on December 15th on National Early Sign Day. I will, I will be covering that. If you like my work, feel free to leave a tip slash, via, slash donation via PayPal link uh, in the video or whatever. Um, again, fundraiser begins in January 9th. 
Also, my email again is CoachBigPete, FP at gmail.com. Follow Coach Big Pete and Deep Dish Football on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Also, um, again, still doing free recruiting advisement sessions, parents. Make sure you schedule your ones with you and your kid. It's absolutely free. Uh, email me, CoachBigPete, FP at gmail.com. As always, I keep saying CoachBigPete, FP at gmail.com. Um, and again, uh, th- th- I'm trying to think of anything else, anything else. Uh, make sure you fill out the recruiting questionnaire classes of 2023, 2024, and 2025. Make sure I have your info. Thank you guys so much for joining for the recruiting report for December 8th, 2021. Thank you guys so much and enjoy the day.